After the September 11, 2001 attack that shook America and the entire world, Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty was invoked for the first time in history. The attack on the U.S. was deemed an attack on all of NATO, and Operation Eagle Assist was executed. Soon, 830 crew members from 13 NATO nations took to the skies, flying the iconic Boeing E-3 Sentry aircraft in 360 missions. NATO's E-3 Sentries now reinforced the U.S. Air Force's own, and the type was considered the most potent reconnaissance warplane in the world. In a massive surveillance operation like the world had never seen before, the mighty E-3s blanketed the American skies, tracking every object that flew over U.S. soil. Time and time again, the Boeing E-3 Sentry has proved to be a marvel of engineering, capable of functioning as a mobile radar control tower to serve as America's eyes in the sky. Still, after almost five decades of service, the formidable U.S. and NATO asset is being targeted by China, as spy satellites recently unveiled images that could have severe and serious implications in the near future. A Flying Radar Tower Built on the foundation of a highly modified Boeing 707-320B airliner frame, the E-3 Sentry is a massive airborne warning and control system designed as early as 1963 and launched in the early 70s. The aircraft owes its iconic look to the enormous 30-foot-wide circular radar positioned above its hull, which is playfully called the Oreo by its crew. The massive antenna and a complex computer control room on the inside of the aircraft, manned by over 30 specialists, give the Sentry its unparalleled capabilities. The Sentry can penetrate enemy territory at high speeds and altitudes to function as a flying surveillance supercenter that delivers live aerial intelligence to every friendly aircraft in the region. Each E-3 can detect, identify, and track aircraft from the ground to the stratosphere and over 400 miles around the plane. The data collected and processed by the Sentry and its crew can then be instantly transferred to any friendly warplane, ship, or command center in the region. This formidable surveillance prowess allows the U.S. and its allies to orchestrate the most complex airborne operations in any corner of the world, even where they do not possess any conventional radar coverage. Despite utilizing a quickly aging airframe, the technology within the aircraft itself has evolved incessantly throughout the decades, making it, to this day, one of the most capable surveillance aircraft solutions in the world. Currently, the U.S. Air Force has over 30 sentries ready for operational use. In contrast, NATO has acquired 18 E-3s, which have been historically used to watch the skies over Europe and detect any possible aerial attack. France, Britain, Chile, and Saudi Arabia have also bought E-3 sentries to bolster their air surveillance capabilities throughout the years. Almost untouchable. Due to its outstanding surveillance technology and the type of role the E-3 AWACS plays, it is also one of the warplanes with the highest survivability rates in the world. Any incoming attack will be detected long before it reaches the sentry, as it is always escorted by fighters that will usually destroy the threat before it can even scratch the massive radar aircraft. Jim Gruppe, one of the aircraft engineers that worked on the sentry back when it was first deployed during the 1970s, went into detail to explain the aircraft's remarkable survivability. Quote, it happens that one of the studies I did was on the vulnerability of AWACS to enemy attack. First off, AWACS had two basic mission types. In one case, the plane followed at some distance and surveyed the horizon. I can't give you numbers, but the radar is very accurate for a very long distance. In the event an enemy fighter came our way, we would simply call up our own fighters to take them out. Gruppe concluded that the radar system inside the aircraft was so powerful that an incoming aircraft attack had virtually zero chance of getting within attack range of the sentry before being blown out of the sky by fighter escorts. In fact, the radar technology was so advanced that the crew could not only detect incoming aircraft, but also determine the exact model and the armament they were carrying long before the enemies could engage the aircraft and its escorts. In a second mission scenario, when the sentry flies over a live battlefield, Gruppe admitted that the risk of damage to an AWACS was more likely. However, the likelihood of the enemy delivering significant damage to the sentry was slim. 
He explained, quote, The problem in this situation was that the enemy aircraft might be right below us, or at least quite close. For this situation, we would need our own forces to fly alongside. Unlike AWACS, however, their time in the air is much more limited, so we'd need constant cycling of our defensive forces. Gruppe also described a situation in which the sentry would be in real danger of destruction. If the enemy deploys long-range missiles during a mission over a battlefield, the incredible amount of electromagnetic activity emitted by the aircraft will make it an easy target for the projectiles. And even though the sentry has defensive measures for those situations, Gruppe concluded, quote, Survivability was under three minutes, unless the countermeasures were successful, which many times they are, but many times are not. Service As a one-of-a-kind flying radar tower that was almost invulnerable to attacks, the E-3 Sentry became an overwhelming success story for the U.S. and its allies. The asset was deemed so valuable that even when the Boeing 707 on which the Sentry was based became obsolete, the U.S. Air Force continued to support the technology. The E-3 first participated in a major global conflict during the early 90s, when Iraq invaded Kuwait and the U.S. and other Western countries intervened to halt the invasion. During the conflict, the U.S.-led coalition unleashed one of the most significant airborne incursions in modern history. Such a feat was orchestrated in part thanks to the capabilities of the E-3 Sentry and the Grumman E-2 Hawkeye. Operation Desert Storm was also a significant example of modern combined arms tactics, where naval, airborne, armored, and infantry forces fought synchronously to deliver overwhelming force. The ability of the E-3 Sentry to gather intelligence behind enemy lines and then share it instantly with all friendly forces in the area was a pivotal point in achieving joint success in the Persian Gulf. Later, in 1999, the E-3 Sentry took center stage again, this time operating for NATO. When the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia executed an all-out assault on the Kosovo Liberation Army, pursuing Kosovo Albanians and cornering them in the region of Kosovo, NATO intervened with a massive bombardment campaign that they justified as a humanitarian operation. The E-3s were deployed over the conflict area to orchestrate the over 1,000 aircraft that were unleashed from bases in Germany and Italy as part of the air campaign intended to strike Yugoslav air defenses and valuable targets such as the bridges across the Danube River, plants, power stations, telecommunications services, and military compounds. The most prominent deployment of E-3s, however, would take place right after the 9-11 attacks on U.S. soil, when NATO and the U.S. Air Force committed over 4,300 flight hours from October 9, 2001 to May 16, 2002. These missions included an extraordinary surveillance operation that covered vast territories across the mainland United States in a protection blanket like the world had never seen before. Threat from the Far East Throughout recent decades, China has developed a rather peculiar culture around mock-ups, mimicking Western designs in everything from smartphones to clothing to cars. It was to be expected that the Chinese military forces would take a similar approach when preparing for a possible conflict against the U.S. Images produced by Western spy satellites have revealed that many U.S. vehicles, ships, and even military bases are being replicated on China's army facilities across the Gobi Desert. More concerning is the fact that several images recovered in 2021 show two E-3 Sentry mock-ups, which appear to be used as target practice for China's new long-range missile systems. China knows how valuable AWACS are. In fact, the nation is in the midst of developing its own early warning system. As such, the Chinese recognize that the E-3 would be a primary target if a major conflict between China and the U.S. were to arise. To make matters worse, the Chinese military is well aware of how old the E-3 airframe is and how vulnerable it is to long-range missiles. According to several military analysts, the mock-ups depict China's plan to target the sentries on the ground before they take off. This plan seems logical, as taking out America's eyes in the sky would be the ideal first step before any significant confrontation. Today, the U.S. is working on a new generation of AWACS to replace the E-3 sentry. But before that happens, China remains aware of the current technology's weaknesses. Interestingly, reports also mention 
that the satellites photograph Chinese mock-ups of entire Taiwanese Air Force bases, which might mean that the E-3 Sentry mock-ups could be a training operation to weaken the U.S. Air Force in the region before China unleashes an invasion on Taiwan. Thank you for watching our video. If you want to know more about the technical capabilities of the E-3 Sentry, click on your screen and check out our Dark Tech video on the subject, where we delve deep into what makes America's eye in the sky work. And hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. Stay tuned.